do want to talk some puck. Yeah. It's the big trade that happened in the National Hockey League, right? Winnipeg, Columbus, for any people watching the network right now, and they're just pulling themselves out from underneath the rock. This is the details. These are the details of the deal. Pierre-Luc Dubois and a 2022 third rounder heading to Columbus in exchange for Patrick Ryanay and Jack Roslovic. Okay, lots. It's still way too early to determine who won and who lost this deal. But as we look at Pierre-Luc Dubois rocking the How'd Jets How'd get that? Sweater. He's in quarantine. Must be a little Photoshop, right? I mean, these days, you don't know what to believe on the internet, especially it's gotta be pictures. Photoshop. It has to Looks be. Looks good. Expertly done, though, I will Looks say. Good. Good looking kid. Very well spoken, too. But there are a bunch of winners in this trade. Run the viewers at home through. Well, you did pose that question to me a while ago. Who were the big winners from this trade? And, of course, we said, well... I haven't played a game yet, so right, exactly. So we can't. Let's say not call it too ice. early. But there were some winners, and we won't even worry about the losers. We'll no. worry about the winners, and the winners to me were the players. Is that what you said? All of them. All three of them. Yeah. All three of the guys involved in this trade. We won't give the third rounder any credit because <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. But Pierre Luc Dubois, he wanted to get traded. He gets traded. He goes to a place where his mother may be cooking for him. Because his dad is an assistant coach, of course, yep. with the Manitoba Moose. But more importantly, he's going to be a huge addition for the Winnipeg Jets. He's going to give them a one-two punch that we'll talk about later. But it's going to be really powerful down the middle of this club. But I consider him a major winner. I thought this was going to drag on a lot longer. And we can keep going through. Patrick Laine, same thing. Wasn't happy, but he showed up. He played, Nelly, and he played hard. Mm. He had three points that first game. He's taken a lot of grief about maybe his defensive game over the last few years. I think that's old news. I'm not going to say it's fake news, but I'm going to tell you it's old news. This guy's done nothing but take to heart the criticism that came his way, and he's made himself a more rounded, all-around two-way player. I'm not saying he's Patrice Bergeron, but he is much more responsible, and we know he does the dirty deed. He scores goals, and that's what yeah, everybody is looking for He's going to be a huge addition for the Columbus Blue Jackets. And then Jack Roslovic from born in Columbus. Ohio. Yeah, proud Columbus kid. I exactly. And in my opinion, he wasn't signed. He wasn't in camp. There wasn't any discussions of a contract being imminent either. He just made it known he wanted to be moved. For that reason, in my opinion, the big winners for this trade, all three players. They all come up huge. They all get what they want. They all got to back it up now. I think they will. I think Jack Roslovic actually is going to be a really important piece. It's not often that we have trades in the National Hockey League that encompass a 23-year-old and two 22-year-olds that are all good players. You don't see this very often. This is a rare time, really. And I was shocked at how quickly this came together. Because yeah. I thought it might be a little Matt Duchesne 2.0, to which Joe Sackick did a magnificent job waiting that trade out. But let me tell you, I talked to Joe. That was tough. It took a long, long time. He had to show a tremendous amount of patience, which he did because he's a great leader. But uh, not the case. Not the case for Yarmo Kikalina, not the case for uh, Shevel Dayoff. And it's not just the, the youth that you point out, the age of the players. You know, a second and third overall pick being traded for each other. And then Roslovic, he turns 24 this Friday. Yeah. So a nice homecoming yeah. birthday. 25th present. overall himself. Right. So another first rounder in the deal. It is very unique. This was multitude of unique situations kind of coming together as one for one big trade that had the hockey world buzzing. So now, because we haven't seen them yet, all we can do is sort of imagine, project, and forecast. Now, because I didn't go 1-1. I never played a, played a game in the National like you did lots. I'm going to ask you to do that. Sure. How do things stack up in terms of center duos, okay, Okay. in that North sure. Division? All right. Okay, so let's show the people right. at home let's, how they all stack up. Let's show everybody what we've been doing today, wondering what are we going to do with one game starting at 10 o'clock? We're going to talk about things like this because they're interesting. And there's a lot to like. There's a, there's some to love on this here full screen. Top two centers by team okay. in this division, okay? All right. In home, Monaghan for Calgary. McDavid, Dreisaitl in Edmonton. Montreal, Philip Deneau, Danny Boy, and Nick Suzuki. Hopper Pride. The Ottawa Senators, Norris, and Artem Anisimov. 
Austin Matthews and JT. All right, I feel like I'm Better. playing Rumi Cube right now. I can yeah. reshuffle the deck here and get it in order. Okay. Get a couple runs. Got I can it. Really easy. I can go one to three. When I look at that list, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl are the goal standard. Yeah, I mean, two of the last four hard trophies. Yeah. Just, just watch last night, <laughs> the last second of the game, what those guys were able to accomplish. And yes, as you said, guys that have been MVPs back to back. Pretty impressive between the two of them, of course. But those two guys are the goal standard for me. That's who you'd want to start with. If you could start with any two combination of those players on that list. The second group for me, well, that would be Austin Matthews and John Tavares. Still. Also understandable. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are a pretty dynamic duo. Austin Matthews he has got a lot of Patrick Line in him in terms of scoring goals. Reinvented himself this offseason. We don't know what heights he's going to reach, but he is a guy that I don't even think he's gotten his full due other than he's been paid appropriately because he's very well paid, and so is John Tavares. They would be my second on that list. Okay, so, but does this new jet combo crack your top three? Because you've given the top two. Are they sure. the top three? Well, on paper? because I'm not smart enough to remember any of the other ones, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's not just that's, that. They're good hockey players. It's a great duo. Come I on. would have them third on the last period, and I okay. could probably even recite some of the other guys. But they clearly, to me, slot into that third spot. And in some ways, there's some elements that they'll bring that even the other two units don't bring. And that's because not Mike, Mark Scheifele. He's going to score. He's going to make plays. He's going to do all the things that we've grown accustomed to see him do as a number one center. He's got his own great pair going in terms of him and Blake Wheeler. Right. The chemistry that they have, quite frankly, you know, along with Connor, a little bit of a party that Patrick Liney wasn't always invited to, and I don't think that sat that well with him. Mm. But now that we just focus on the centers down the middle, Pierre-Luc Dubois is different than my top two pairs because he's going to bring some scoring, some skill, some skating. Everybody kind of brought that, but a little bit of nastiness. What he did to Toronto last year in the playoffs, that was impressive. Mack truck. He was a Mack truck. Yeah. He was a dominant force. That's what Kevin Chevaldayoff is hoping when he rolls these two guys out down the middle. Add in Adam Lowry as that third center because it looks like he's going to fill that spot. Stasty's going to end up moving over to the wing. It's going to be pretty impressive for the Winnipeg Jets. Their challenge will be really just to try to round out that decor that used to be so good not that long ago until Truba left, Buffalo left, right. Myers left. Right. We can All keep gone. going. Yeah. Everybody uh, gone. Sherratt left. Uh -huh. I'll stop there because it's an only an yeah, hour no, show. Stop bringing up old stuff. Lots. Yeah. No, and again, like for the fans of the other teams that we didn't mention, if you, you don't root for Edmonton, you don't root for Toronto, or you don't root for Winnipeg, it's not that you're – Horvat and Patterson were my favorite. Right. It's not that they're not good, but like those top three are really, really, are really, really strong. Yeah. Now, for Patrick Laine, who's leaving Winnipeg, now trying to find a new centerman to help him kind of take off and help out the Blue Jackets offense. So here are the candidates. All right. Geez, you're putting me under the gun right I am. Later. I want to know all on of the things. Monday night. Thank you very much. All okay. Right. Domi, Texier, yeah. Roslovic, Koivu, and Grigorenko. Okay, well, uh, Patrick is going to experience some of the same anxiety he had in Winnipeg. The guy, believe it or not, for me on that list that I actually think is the best guy to complement Patrick Laine's talents, his unique talents. It's not like he's an assassin. He's just got unique well, you don't know. sniping ability. You don't know what he moonlights. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, we know he's a sniper. That's we true. tell that. And that's Texier for me. And that'll be a bit of a surprise for such yeah. a young player. But his skill level is through the roof. I just think this is a guy that's only scratching the ceiling. Let's not forget that Miko Koivu coming back is going to help Columbus down the middle. They haven't had his services yet. Um, going to debut on Tuesday, right? Yeah. Max Domi is an interesting guy. But it's Texas at the end of the day when you really look at that list. That's not super overpowering just for the record. They wouldn't make my top five or six or seven. Sure list for duos mm -hmm. I don't even know who the other one would be Max Domi and him I guess but uh, it's still going to be enough where I think Patrick Liney is going to score at essentially the same rate he was scoring in Winnipeg I'm, I'm very very excited about Texier's future yeah. I, I wonder though like putting Liney and Domi together that it, it seems like it could be fun like Domi I mean, a couple years ago what well, looked like he was going to turn himself into a force and look, he's just kind of getting his Columbus legs under him here. Yeah, the difference for me when I look at all those combinations of centers is you're looking for guys that can, A, drive a line, carry a line, make the line. 
and your secondary component is your guys that are complementary players. All of the centermen right now as they currently stand on the Columbus Blue Jackets to me are complementary players. They're not guys that are going to drive a line, but I could see Texia getting there. I could see Max Domi getting back to that level, although there have been times when I did see him as a guy that was driving a line, but my final analysis is more of a complementary player, and there's nothing wrong with that. No. You can have an amazing no. NHL career and be a complementary player. Ask Ryan Nugent Hopkins.